All right, so <clears throat> today we're going to kind of move on from what we had been doing previously about um, just looking at Mendelian genetics, and we're going to talk really briefly, all right, this isn't going to be very long, about probability in genetics because probability is, is really important, all right, questions that are going to ask you about what's the likelihood that you would get offspring from a particular cross that are like this or that have at least one dominant allele for one of their traits um, and that's going to be something that you know you could draw out a whole Punnett square for but especially like on the exam where everything's timed you want to do things as efficiently as possible and I'm going to show you some ways today about actually figuring out some of those probabilities without even having to draw upon its square and so hopefully it can save you some time on questions like that also hopefully it gives you a little bit deeper understanding of kind of the two rules independent assortment and segregation that we talked about in the last video all right so um mendel's laws of segregation and independent assortment kind of lead naturally to the idea that the same type of laws of probability that apply to figuring out um, how likely you are to roll a specific sum on two dices or what's the likelihood of flipping three heads in a row on a quarter, <clears throat> the same rules of uh, probability apply to both situations. Because how we defined segregation and independent assortment last time, the only thing that um, really governs what specific uh, chromosome out of the two uh, homologous chromosomes that you inherit is probability, right? It's just chance. So we can do the same type of manipulations that we would on, you know, figuring out what card we'd pull from a deck. So the same rules apply. So calculating the probability of making a specific gamete. So now we're thinking about kind of like Punnett squares. It's just like calculating the probability of flipping a coin. So for example, if you have a individual that is heterozygous, and you're trying to predict what they could potentially pass from the, for, off to their offspring. We know from Mendel's laws that there is an equal chance that the offspring would receive either the dominant allele or the recessive allele, just like it's equally possible to flip a heads or a tails. So in this case, there's a 50-50 chance that the offspring will either receive a dominant copy or a recessive copy from this parent. Just like in the bottom example, there's a 100% chance that their offspring will receive a dominant P because that is the only possibility. There's th This uh, parent is homozygous dominant, so that is the only thing that they can pass off to their offspring. So you can look at the genotype of an individual for one trait for a monohybrid cross, and you could do a pretty good job predicting the probabilities of what each parent would contribute to their offspring. <clears throat> just so we remember, just like tossing a coin, how the outcome of, if you were going to toss a coin twice, the outcome of your first flip of the coin in no way affects the po potential for the what the second flip is going to be. Each time, it's 50-50. Just like with this heterozygous individual, if they had 10 offspring, right, each time there's a 50-50 chance that that given offspring would receive a dominant copy or a recessive copy. So it is possible all 10 could receive the dominant copy or all 10 could re receive the recessive copy. That's not forbidden. What uh, we're saying is that if we did this cross enough times 
eventually the data would work out to around 50 50. all right but there's nothing willing it to be that way there's no kind of intervention on, on that point So I think this is most easily distilled when we look at simple Punnett squares again, doing these crosses, all right? And so if uh, the organism on the top is the male organism and the organism on the side is the female organism, we could write down all of the different combinations of the two right here and then find the probability of their offspring. Oh. Sorry. So, just like we had looked at, we're looking at this chart, okay? Both organisms could donate a dominant copy. So, this first line represents this first box, right? Our male organism could donate a dominant copy and our female organism a recessive copy. So, this box is here, this second line. It just kind of shows you how we're figuring it out. Now one of the things that this box starts to depict it is what is called the rule of multiplication. The rule of multiplication, that's something that I'm going to make sure that everybody knows and we're going to explain it on the next page. And I know with this simple Punnett square you probably could easily do this simple Punnett square in your head and figure out all the probabilities. But I'm going to show you a technique with this simple Punnett square that you could apply even to large Punnett squares so that you could figure them out in your head. It's called the rule of multiplication. And it talks about calculating the chance that two or more independent events will occur together. By independent event, it means two events where the probability of one event happening is not in any way related to the probability of the other event happening. So, for example, if I toss two coins at the same time, what's the chance that they will both land heads up? So these are independent events because the probability of, of flipping the first coin and landing heads does not depend on the probability of the second coin landing on heads. And so if we want to find the chance of the two events happening together, that both quarters will land on heads. We take what is the probability of the first event happening? Well, it's 50-50 that the first quarter would land on heads. And we'll multiply it by what is the chance of the second quarter landing on heads? Well, that's 50-50. So one half or 50% times one half or 50% equals one quarter or 25%. You can do this easily uh, in Punnett squares to figure out, for example, if I have two heterozygous individuals, what's the chance of getting a homozygous recessive individual? Well, there's a 50% chance this first one will donate the recessive P to its offspring. And there's a 50% chance that this second parent will donate the recessive P to its offspring. So multiplying those two probabilities, and we get one-fourth or 25%. You can kind of see this depicted here with the multiplication on the table for our calculating probability side. You could do this Punnett square and, and figure out, okay, one out of four, two out of four, okay. Or you could just write down the, the different combinations of the parents and then multiply them to get the different genotypes of the offspring. The rule of multiplication also applies to dihybrid Punnett squares, and this is where it will become really useful for you so that you don't ha you can answer questions without always having to draw out a dihybrid Punnett square. So if we have, for example, and we know we have two heterozygous parents, dominant Y, recessive Y, dominant R, recessive R, what's the probability of producing a homozygous recessive offspring. And now we only need are going to use the multiplication rule to figure this out, no Punnett square. So for each all right, 
What is the probability of producing the recessive Y gamete? Well, it's 1 out of 2. What is the probability of producing the recessive R gamete? It's 1 out of 2. So for our first parent, the probability of, produ of giving to your offspring or producing the gamete that has a recessive Y and a recessive R is 1 half times 1 half or 1 fourth. And if you wrote out, like on the top of your dihybrid Punnett square, all the different combinations of Y and R, you would confirm that the probability of producing this gamete is 1 fourth. Now, in order to have the homozygous recessive genotype, that offspring would need both parents to produce this YR gamete. So it, it, there's a one-fourth chance that one parent would. There's also a one-fourth chance that the other parent would. And there is a one-fourth times one-fourth or one-sixteenth probability of both producing the recessive Y recessive R gamete so that the offspring is homozygous recessive. And so there's one sixteenth chance. So we can do all of this without ever touching a Punnett square to figure questions like this out. Now, if you're in the heat of the moment and you forget how to do this correctly, doing a Punnett square will always give you the right answer. But this is a much faster way, especially on the exam that's timed, to save some time and figure out the same answers. All right, the uh, last thing I want to talk about is called the rule of addition. And the rule of addition is a way that we can figure out what the chances are that an event can occur in more than one way. So we're summing the separate prob probabilities of the different ways a given event can occur. So, for example, if I want to figure out the probability of two heterozygous individuals being crossed and producing a heterozygous individual, I find what's the probability of, of um, each of the different ways for it to happen. So using the rule of multiplication, I can figure out that if the male, off, uh, the male parent produces a dominant P and the female parent produces a recessive P, that's one way one-fourth chance of it occurring that way. Or vice versa, if the male parent produces a recessive P and the female per parent produces a dominant P, that's another way that same event can happen, one-fourth. So in total, we add these two, one-fourth plus one-fourth, one-half. There's one out of two chance of producing this homozygous or heterozygous genotype. All right. So if you see, for a lot of times we will combine the rule of multiplication and the rule of addition to be able to get an answer. And so these are the two things with probability I want to talk about today. Here next week, all right, to kind of wrap up a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about, about heredity, all right, next week we're going to look at uh, the chi-square test, right? And this is a statistical test that we're going to use to see if data that we have collected on crossing different individuals and looking at their uh, heredity patterns supports or doesn't support our hypothesis by comparing what we observed in our experiment versus the expected data that uh, we would expect to get from doing like a Punnett square like this. All right, um, and we're going to talk about a whole bunch of uh, kind of other extensions with that too. But let's wait till next week to get to this point. I just included it here because it is a statistical technique and taking a little look for that genetics and statistics are very closely intertwined and that we're going to continue to be looking at this in the future.